Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties. Nick Adams, Anna Casiejos, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. I'm Anna. Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And today we're breaking down State of Grace. So State of Grace is the first song on Taylor Swift's Red album. Taylor wrote it all by herself. Of course. And so it was first released in 2012, and then she re-released it in 2021 on Red Taylor's version. And Lacey, you found a clip of her talking about the meaning behind this song on Good Morning America, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So this is from 2012 when the album was first coming out and she was talking uh, to Good Morning America. I wrote this song about when you first fall in love with someone, the possibilities and, you know, kind of thinking about the different ways that it could go. And um, it's a really big sound to me. This sounds like the feeling of falling in love in an epic way. And she's right. This is a big sounding song. Mm -hmm. It's the first track on the album. So it really kicks everything off. And I... I mean, I picked this as my favorite number one, Mm -hmm. track one of all of her albums, and I just love the intro to this song. Does it not put you in a good mood? I feel like. And I was reading a lot of reviews and stuff while we were, you know, trying to pick apart this song, and Mm -hmm. a lot of writers were comparing it to U2. Okay. And it's it's a very like big song. It's definitely like an arena song. Yeah. And she opened her red tour with this song. And so it, I, I kind of get the comparisons of it's a great like, kind of like you two. Yeah, it's a great opener. It sets the vibe. I just love it so much. I think something that is. Oh, wait. Sorry, I wanted to give it a little no, more. No, 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 sorry. Um... <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let's just play the whole song, actually, and also the acoustic version. Um, yeah, right. I think something that is really, really cool about this song, being a track one, is that I think it foreshadows the entire album. Like, I think that it kind of really lets you know what you're going to get into with the whole album. Like, there's other track ones, like, you know, like, I feel like with I Forgot That You Existed, it you can tell that it's a change in era. And yeah. same with, like, The One and things like that. But I feel like State of Grace foreshadows the Red album because, she, you know, she says, love is a ruthless game unless you play it good and right. And that's kind of the epiphany of, like, the entire Red album because she describes love in so many different ways and colors and emotions and breakups and heartbreak and Mm -hmm. then you have like stay 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 but i think state of grace kind of just really foreshadows the entire album as a whole well and also with a lot of her track ones it's just setting the the tone it kind of at least for me it kind of puts me back on my heels a little bit because like whoa okay from the first note we know this isn't going to be the most country sounding album yeah right away that doesn't sound like a country song that sounds like kind of a big almost rock song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we already know that she's changing things up a little bit. And that's what I really appreciate this because from her first three albums, it was super country. And now she's really shifting into who she kind of wants the next version of her to be. So I really like that. Mm-hmm. I just feel guilty every time I hear this song because I don't remember exactly what I ranked it as, but I know that it had a low ranking just because I wasn't familiar with it whenever we ranked our number ones. Now I'm in love with it. And I feel bad for giving it such a low ranking. Don't hate me. I know. Don't hate me as a Swifty. <laughs> I know that, Nick, you said you really just like the production of, mm-hmm. of the song. But I really, really like the acoustic version. Do like you? Like a lot. Me yeah, too. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, I find myself listening to the acoustic version. I mean, I listen to the, the regular track one version all the time, obviously, because it's the first one on the album. Um, but I find myself seeking out the acoustic one. And I think it's because I would listen to the acoustic one on the original album. But then listening to the acoustic one on Red Taylor's version, mm-hmm. it's... It's just gorgeous. Yeah, I think it definitely... It just sounds like you're at a concert. Yeah, and... And, and with, that's that's why I love it. With the acoustic version, you're definitely hearing more of what she's saying in the song. Yeah. You know, you don't have these giant ah. drums and electric guitar in your way. Yeah. Um, so you're hearing more of, like, the emotion that she's conveying in parts of the song because she's excited in parts of the song about this new relationship. She's a little torn in parts of the song. She's mm-hmm. a little heartbroken in parts of the song. But yeah, you can you can get more of that in the acoustic, the mm-hmm. feeling for sure. 
Well, here's what Taylor had to say in the stories behind the Red Songs. She said basically exactly what Anna just said. State of Grace is a song I wrote at the beginning process of making this album, and I think it helps define what the rest of the record is just with one line. There's a line in the song that says, love is a ruthless game unless you play it good and right. That's kind of like a warning for the rest of the record. That's what's going to happen if you don't play this right. This is what could happen if you do. It almost serves as the perfect kind of warning label for the rest of the record. As soon as you hear the song, there are two ways this could go you could be good to people or you could not play fair and both outcomes are reflected on the record and I also think there's I think that another line that kind of you know also backs up the idea that this just foreshadows the entire album is when she said and I never saw you coming and I'll never be the same because it kind of really applies applies to like all of her relationships like we know that after a relationship like she really learns from them like yeah Jake Gyllenhaal like she dated him and then exclusively only dated British men after that (laughs) um you know but then like I think it just kind of also just feeds into the idea that it's like I never saw it like because the 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 relationship that a lot of the Red Album is based off of was such like a whirlwind romance which we've talked about in our previous episodes um so it's like really like I never saw you coming and I'll never be the same and she Mm -hmm. wasn't even the same after like after this album she went pop like she just completely yeah changed everything so I think that line also stands out to me well would y'all like to start from the beginning of course yes I'm walking fast through the traffic lights So here she is with the traffic lights. And she said before in an interview that she thinks relationships are like traffic lights because she believes they can only work when they're on green. So she's walking fast through the traffic lights. That means she's moving quickly through this relationship. And then busy streets and busy lives, pretty self-explanatory. It's just life in general, how we're all so busy and it's touch and go and anything can change at any time. Yeah, and touch and go, Does that is that saying that this relationship kind of started off just kind of a fun fling and then it got serious later is that what she's saying when she's saying when she's saying we're we're touch and go um we're alone we're changing our minds like it's kind of like kind of back and forth like we don't really know what we are we're having fun and then at some point it obviously gets really serious yeah but i wonder if that's how it started they're two super busy people Mm -hmm. they're in new york the hustle and bustle of the big city and they're just having fun and then maybe it turned into something more for her than it did for him yeah, I like that interpretation. Yeah, and we know they got together and broke up, I mean, more than once, right? Yeah, when they broke so, up the first time. there, yeah, saying this is it, I've had enough. And touch and go, touch and go makes me think of, like, questionable. Mm-hmm. Not touch and go in a good way. Touch and go as in, like, what is this? I don't trust you. This is hot and cold, touch and go. Kind of like wishy-washy, like, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I don't know. Like, maybe she doesn't know how he's feeling about it. Like he's yeah. more distant almost. Could it also be touch and go like, like, like I was t- like touched and then he left. Yeah. Like oh, touch maybe. And go. <laughs> Bye. You literally know? touch and go. Like literally. Like, I yeah. mean, I know we're talking about it very figuratively, yeah. but it could also be. Absolutely. You know, she's a genius. And then um, she gets a little deeper in clip two. We fall in love till it hurts or bleeds or fades in time. She knows just like anything, we could change at any time. Also, our feelings could change at any time without knowing that it's coming. You can be in love one day, and then the next day it could end or fade away. Um, Who knows what even the problem is, because the problem just might be you. It's you. Um, I will never get over that line. I think it also, I think that line also gives me, it reminds me of blank space. The So it's going to be forever, or it's going to go down in flames. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's one or or the other. Yeah, it's either going to be great or terrible. Uh Uh-huh. I do love the next line. I never saw you coming. I'll never be the same. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can use that line for any kind of relationship, like a good one or a bad one. Yeah. Because you can mm-hmm. be changed and you'll never be the same in a good way. Mm-hmm. You know, so I kind of feel like she could insert that song or that line into several different songs and it can kind of take on a new meaning every <gasps> time. That would be really cool if she just re- reused that entire line, but and like in a love song. On a song for Joe. Oh my God. Oh, that would be so powerful. In her wedding vows. <gasps> Nice. Oh my God. And it also in in uh, in the sad interpretation of it, it you can kind of relate it back to I mean, all too well when she says, I'd like to be my old self again, but I'm still trying to find it. Mm. You know, because it's like I never saw it coming on and I'll never be the same, but I want I want to be. I want right. to be my old self. Mm-hmm. So many interpretations to all these lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just the first track on the whole album. <laughs> What's the other 30 songs gonna be like? Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Intense. <laughs> 
Well, then she starts speaking about armor falling and pierce the room like a cannonball because he finally started to let himself go around her and his presence is so strong that it can pierce the room and that's why she was so attracted to him in the first place because he's showing his vulnerable side and then he's being all charismatic and piercing the room with his really strong presence and now all we know is don't let go because she doesn't want to let go of that relationship. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she's, and then, she's used armor imagery before. In the, mm-hmm. in the story of us, she said, the battle's in your hands now, but I would lay my armor down if you said you'd rather love than fight. And so now she's saying you come around and let the and the armor falls. So it's kind of just mm-hmm. the same. I feel like she used that in the same context. Then we get to where she starts getting um, a little naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Up in your room and a slate to clean, just twin fireside. So what is she hinting and, at there? I've seen some people maybe saying that this could have been Taylor's first. I, is that's that, how I is took it. Is that what it means by clean slates? We're alone in your room, mm-hmm. clean slates. Now, does that mean this was his first also? Because you said our slates are our clean. Our slates are clean. I think it's that they didn't know each other. They Right. They're... Y- not necessarily intimately, but... Just like in general. Like, yeah, yeah. like just like a clean Getting slate and like totally. a relationship just mm-hmm. in general. But I mean, definitely could. But yeah. I, I don't... I don't believe that... Jake was Jake, who was thirty, <laughs> had, had been saving slate. himself for <laughs> Taylor Swift. But mm-hmm. didn't he tell her that? Not that we believe it, but isn't that a rumor that he did tell her that? I have. I would never, I would never take that lyric as that, except for that I know more about this situation, and so that's why I would take it that way. If someone just said our slates are clean, I'm not automatically thinking you're talking about the V card. How? But here, I do think that's what she's talking about. How would we know that he said that to her? Yeah, I think I've just heard that as like a rumor, a speculation. Right. And to me, this whole relationship, it was so short. It was three months, and she's written so much about it, obviously all too well, such a heartbreaking song, and she's she's obviously hurt by something. It had to have been more than just their age difference, and he broke up with her. There's something that she's not telling us. Yeah. Maybe he crossed a line somewhere, and she's not going to reveal that. Maybe it was something deeply personal about, like, maybe he was her first or something like that. So there's something there than this just being your average run-of-the-mill teen or or young 20s love story Mm -hmm. young 20s relationship I just feel like there's an extra layer there that we don't know yeah that's making her pour out her soul into these lyrics because it did affect her so much Mm -hmm. so that's the only reason that it makes me lead to think okay maybe at least for her this could have been her first and I feel weird and creepy even (laughs) speculating about that but that's something that Swifties I've seen have been speculating about for a while well and it couldn't it could not just mean sexually, but to love someone for mm-hmm. the first time right? with your heart. Mm-hmm. That's true because you could have a lot of relationships where you just didn't really feel completely in right. love. And granted, you know, at this point she had written other songs about other relationships, but maybe this was the first one where she really felt in love. It was not that just next like, level love. Yeah, not just like I love this person, but I'm in love with this person. Right. You know, and, may, like, and for you to feel in love with someone mm-hmm. so deeply and then not like feel the same way and they rip the rug out from under you after three months i would also write an entire album totally yeah i I get that too for sure and something that's pretty cool is how that line about twin fire signs kind of relates to another song so in all too well she's also using this same imagery and did the twin flame bruise paint you blue so she's singing about twin fire signs in all too well and looking that up twin fire sign well Going back to State of Grace, they're both Sagittarius's, mm-hmm. which is a fire sign. Jake mm-hmm. and Taylor are, so that's a clue that it's about him. They both have blue eyes. Mm-hmm. That's a clue that it's, it's about him. It's such a beautiful him. line. It is. It it's is. really great. And then in All Too Well, when she's singing about twin flame, a twin flame, it's like a soulmate that's like one. It's like one soul that splits into two. It's like the two people come together, and then that splits into two again Mm -hmm. if that kind of makes sense it's like they are one and so she's already like megan fox and machine gun kelly obviously yeah she's megan fox has said that before um and so and then people are saying like i saw a really good thing acceptable mood for two two three on reddit she wrote um the hottest fire is blue flame bruises are also blue the consequences of an intense bond burned them painted them blue which is also the color of sadness. And it relates to her using blue later on throughout her 
catalog. Wow, talking that's, about blue. That's deep. Um, and like, so a twin flame should be something that lives on. Like, you don't rip apart a twin flame. You can't. And mm-hmm. so that's what she's talking about in All Too Well. And so then here in State of Grace, she's already hinting at the beginnings of what she thought their relationship was headed towards. I cannot just think of having like an idea, like the one that you just explained, and putting it into those words. I right? Know. Like isn't that, that a, is. Isn't that a crazy, poetry. twisty, turny? Yeah. How her mind works? Hey, let's take a second and talk about our friends from BetterHelp. We've been trusting BetterHelp for a long time because we believe in them. BetterHelp will match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can connect in a safe and private online environment to get the help you need. You can get therapy right from the comfort of your own home. No more driving across town to some random waiting room. You can sit on your couch and talk to a professional. Exactly. And it's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help, but it is professional counseling done securely online. And I think it's really cool that you can send a message to your counselor anytime. Like if one day you're just having, you know, a harder day than most, you can just message your counselor, see what's up. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they can make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Yeah, whatever you need help with. They have professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, grief, self-esteem. Whatever you need, they have someone who can help you. Everything you share is confidential, it's convenient, it's professional, and it's affordable. And check out their testimonials that are posted daily on their website. So we want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Taylor Swift fan. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash Taylor Swift fan. And she's not done there. She also sort of uses this similar imagery in peace. So, ah. so again, we know that Taylor's a fire sign. Jake was a fire sign. Well, Joe is a water sign. Okay, so he's a Pisces. So listen, knowing that, listen to this line from Peace. But I'm a fire and I'll keep your brittle heart warm. If you cascade ocean wave blues come. I oh love my that. god. I right? love that so much. Isn't that a great line? <laughs> I've never put that together. But and so here she is in state of grace. It's the beginning of their relationship. All too well it's ended. They're ripped apart. Uh-huh. But then she's using somewhat similar imagery, using their signs, and now they complement each other. Yeah. They can wow. take care of each other with water and with fire. A lot of harmony. Right. And so it worked out. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part of the whole song, State of Grace, is what comes right after the the line of twin fire signs for blue eyes because that line is so pretty and she sings it so pretty and then it just kind of gets like I don't want to say angry that's not the right word but it just gets more like I just play it. But this love is and I'm obsessed with that part because it really just she went from being like you know twin Thought. so you were never right. you know like it's kind of like more a beat she picks it up she says i loved in shades of wrong which is cool because i mean this album is called red and the song red she uses a lot of different colors and a lot of different shades and she's used that throughout her like entire mm-hmm. discography and then um also this is kind of like speeding up in the taylor swift timeline um but in the music video that we just got for i bet you think about me the opening shot of miles teller the way that like he's standing in front of that wall it makes him look like a saint oh wow Right. Oh, I guess I didn't look at I that. Look I didn't at look at it that again. Yeah, it's like the opening, opening shot. Yeah, yeah. And so, but you were never a saint, and I love in shades of wrong. So then the camera kind of turns, and it shows that. I mean, he's not a saint. It just mm-hmm. happened to be yeah. that the wall behind him made him look like one. It made it look like a halo, almost. Um, so I thought that that's just my favorite part of the song. And then we learn to live with the pain, mosaic broken heart. Okay, you know what? So I saw Life by Michael, our friend Michael, yes. on who joined the show, Michael and Mary in the morning. Um, he was talking, he, he, on TikTok, he was apologizing to Taylor. He said, I've always misinterpreted that line of thinking it said many broken hearts, I think, but it's mosaic Mosaic. and how, like how it just elevates that line yeah. even more mm-hmm. to like a mosaic. Mose- the word mosaic by itself is so pretty, mm-hmm. but to pair it with broken hearts. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good line. I wrote it's here, line. I wrote here in my notes. Can we just appreciate how beautiful of a lyric this is? It is. <laughs> I it's appreciate incredible. it. And if anyone's not familiar with the word mosaic, mosaic is an art where you take different pieces of broken things and quote unquote fix them by creating a new thing by putting them together. So it's used in like a lot of like stained glass mm-hmm. um, type art. And to say mosaic broken hearts, it's basically like you're putting these hearts together out of like broken pieces. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. 
Yeah, I think I also need to apologize to Taylor for not appreciating that before. That's my favorite line in the song, too. I love that line. And all the clips that I pulled was acoustic except for that line because I love how angry and heated she gets whenever she's saying all that. One of my other favorite lyrics in this song is when I've mentioned this before in like our other podcast. I think when we tried to tease that we were doing State of Grace, I sang You're My Achilles Heel. <laughs> you're my Achilles Heel. That was a clip that we just played, actually. Um, she says, you're my Achilles Heel. This is the golden age of something good and right and real. And... I've always I've always said that I learned what about Achilles through this song when I first heard it way back when I was like, what? you're my Achilles heel. What is that? Um, so an Achilles heel is a weakness in spite of overall strength, which can lead to downfall. It says here that while the mythological origin refers to a physical vulnerability, um, it can also reference to other attributes or qualities that can lead to it like an emotional downfall. And the backstory of the Greek mythology is when Achilles was an infant. It was foretold that he would perish at a young age, but to prevent his death, his mother took Achilles to the river Styx, which was supposed to offer powers of invulnerability, and she dipped his body into the water, but she held him by his heel. So that's like his weak spot, mm -hmm. essentially. And so now by saying, like, you're my Achilles heel, it's like by saying, like, you're my weak spot. You are the, the one part that basically, you know. Take me down. Exactly. In spite of being strong. strong. in other ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and like kryptonite. Line. Yeah. Exactly. You Superman fan? It also yeah. just reminds me of horror movies and like the monster under under the bed. If they were going to get you, they'd get your Achilles heel and swipe it with a razor or something. I don't think that's what she meant by that <laughs> lyric, but um, that's have. just what I think of. <laughs> she might you never have. know. You never know. <laughs> I mean, we can take, as, as we've shown in this episode, we can take one line and interpret it in like five different ways. <laughs> but... As we mentioned earlier, the line that really sticks out is love is a ruthless game unless you play it good and right because it is up to you. Well, it's not just up to you. It's also up to your partner how you want to play it and how this is all going to turn out. And she's just recognizing the ruthlessness of it all and that you can go through a lot of pain. Well, I think we need to talk about what state of grace means. I mean, we haven't talked about <laughs> it, right? You're right. <laughs> Well, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary has the phrase meaning having asked God to forgive one's sins, but I don't know if that's necessarily what she means here. I think it's more about a feeling of good and happy, right? I mean, she, yeah, this it's is the period thing. between finding love and breaking her heart where she feels really good and happy. It feels like a state of grace to her. And maybe that feels like a sin. I don't know. She's so used to the turmoil, so then whenever she's in the calm, she doesn't know how to recognize it, maybe. Yeah. Well, this was fairly well-received. A lot of the critics enjoyed it. And can anyone guess where this song landed on the Billboard charts? Originally? Originally, when it came out in 2012, where this landed on the Billboard charts. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere in the, the 20s. It was number 13. Get oh! out! <laughs> That, I'm, I apologize. I mean, I'm sure she would have preferred a number one. Yeah. Yes. But a 13 is not a bad place to be if that's your lucky number. Yeah, that's so true. Well, speaking of um, the song rankings, I saw something on TikTok yesterday that someone said um, to all my friends that make fun of me for being a Swifty, did your favorite artist just re-release an entire album with mostly previously heard songs and all 30 of those songs are in the top 100 list, including a 10 minute song. And she currently has seven different albums on the top 100 currently. Isn't that insane? Yes. Yeah, she does. Yeah. She's just, it's crazy, like, I had this conversation with someone the other day because they were like, why, like, why do you care so much about the 10 minute version of a song that you already know? And I was like, OK, apart from Taylor, like think of your favorite artist, your favorite song. You find out that they have a 10 minute version of that song. You're telling me you wouldn't want it. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand the logic no. of people that don't get us. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it if you don't get us, but if you don't get her, that's something entirely different. It's a red flag. Mm -hmm. A red Taylor's version flag. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we wrap things up here, we do have a few emails that we wanted to read from some of our great listeners. On a previous podcast, we read a ton of emails from everyone, and we've gotten a bunch in since then. And so I wanted to read a few. Yes. If that's okay with you. Absolutely. This is from Julie. Julie wrote us and said, thank you so much for this podcast. I'm a day one, day one, and I run a Facebook fan page for this podcast. What? Wait, really? <laughs> she runs a Facebook wow. fan page. For, I wouldn't found it. You just search our we name, 13, it? a Taylor Swift <gasps> fan podcast. 
Go look it up. <laughs> um, and she said, Can I join? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, absolutely. She said, through listening to this podcast, I've come to the realization that I'm super behind on her super popular songs. It turns out I like a lot of the songs that a lot of people supposedly hate. And and up until this podcast, I disliked some of her popular songs. It's okay. Not every Swifty is going to 100% like every single lyric of every single song. That's just fine. She said, however... And we change our minds, too. Oh, I sure. already changed my mind about State of Grace. So, I mean, it depends on the day. And none of us were huge fans of The Archer. And then once we broke it down, we really flipped. We all flipped on that Absolutely. song. Absolutely. So that's okay. That's natural. Yeah, Julie wrapped things up by saying, however, uh, your breakdowns of the stories behind her songs have changed my opinion on quite a few of her songs that I didn't used to like. So thank you. I'm looking forward to rediscovering Red. Isn't that cool? So yeah. if you're on Facebook, go look up the... <laughs> The fan page for a podcast that's a fan <laughs> fan podcast of Taylor Swift. This is so <laughs> that's like cool. Inception. Yeah, this it's so is neat. So cool. So that's from Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. I'm gonna join. Hopefully, you'll let Thank me you, in. Thank you, Julie. Okay, I have one. Yes. OMG, guys, I love you. My name is Ella, and I live on the Isle of Man in the UK. Me and Nick are so alike. I love you. Aww. You are you are in love till I die, and State of Grace is my number one track one. I can't wait for you guys to break down Red. What album are you excited for Taylor to re-record for the Vault Songs rep? But generally, I can't wait to speak now. Much love. Wow, the Isle of Man. So I'm looking it up. I've never heard of the Isle of Man. Me, I don't Forgive think so me. Either. So it's an island in between the UK and Ireland. <gasps> wow. It's really cool looking. I kind of want to visit. It's crazy that we're just sitting here in our little studio and we're reaching fans and and like friends now that are just on the other side of the world. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, if I had to guess, I'd say she's probably living pretty close to Strang. <laughs> Can we come stay with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> Well, I have an an email here from Rashi. Rashi wrote and said, Hi, guys. I had the time of my life listening to the All Too Well short film episode while attending a very boring class online. (laughs) Anyway, I just wanted to tell you how much I love the podcast. I've tried listening to other podcasts after listening to a couple of your episodes, but I always started comparing them to yours. And I always, always, always come back to you. That is so cute. I love every single one of you. And I did DM you a lot of stuff that I found online when I was breaking down the short film for myself. And I'm glad that you touched on all the points, although I don't think that you saw my DMs. I actually did, and I will share it here in a minute. (laughs) And it's funny because I even have a Twitter fan account for Taylor, and I also tweeted that Jake should learn how to show up at a party from James. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, love you all the way from India, and that's from Rashi. Man, that's awesome. Hi, Rashi. So I did find Rashi's DM, which was really cool. It was a DM that linked us to a Twitter thread that broke down uh, the music video. And there was a lot on this thread, so I can't go through all of it, but I did want to tell you guys my favorite parts of things that we didn't even talk about, um, which I thought was really cool. So uh, one of my favorite parts, it says, the scene at the end where Taylor is seen as an author for All Too Well, and the book is beginning to become illuminated with yellow because she has found her new love, writing. Uh, I didn't even interpret it that way, which I thought Hmm. was really cool. Um, Also, the scene where you see Taylor as an adult and she's like in an apartment, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like the staircase. Yeah. This quick scene is very strong. Taylor walked from the room with a red light, love, to a part of the hallway with a dim blue light, coldness, towards the yellow light, joy, just to turn it off, and then she goes out of the door, representing that she's been through it all and she's able to finally move on and begin another journey. Stop. I love that. I thought that was a really, really, really cool interpretation. This, um, This Twitter thread is... From a Twitter account at DeadToothTS13, if you want to see the whole the dead whole thread. Tooth. That's because she has a knocked out tooth. Yeah, Part dead, of her tooth is yeah, knocked dead out. Tooth. Yeah, that's what Jack calls her. <laughs> that's so funny. So thank you, Rashi, for sharing that thread with us. Um, it was super, super cool. Man, and thank you, Taylor, for making um, so much great music. That means we'll have a podcast forever. We will be breaking <laughs> down all 2 well 10-minute version of short film for so long. It's going to constantly evolve, and we're going to have topics on it all the time yeah and it's really it's really cool that we've been able to connect with so many other swifties around the world that's awesome well thanks so much for joining us on this episode of 13 a taylor swift fan podcast be sure to subscribe to us on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on right now be sure to give us a five-star rating and a good review and join us next time because we're going to be breaking down her song red thanks for listening to 13 a taylor swift fan podcast subscribe for free and leave a positive review on apple podcasts Spotify, or Google Podcasts.